Back to the 2006 Mazda 3. The owner authorized the replacement of the ABS hydraulic unit to take care of the sinking brake pedal. It's a safety item, so he'll be able to pass inspection. Here is the replacement unit. It is a used unit. I found it on eBay, also sold on Amazon. They even list the, the VIN where the, uh, the part is from. And that's all it is. A pretty small, compact ABS module with the hydraulic unit. So the whole assembly we're going to replace on the car. And the unit lives behind the battery. It's a little buried back there. So we'll need to remove the battery, clean this mess up. And let's take a look at OEM service info to make sure we're not missing any steps. So first off, the OEM unit the modulator valve includes the control module it's worth almost twelve hundred dollars at the Mazda dealership there's the part number that was actually very hard to find but I found that it crosses over to a Ford part which is much more readily available online um, used units with a 90-day warranty for example on Amazon here there's the part number 3M512M110CA is compatible with 2004-2009 Mazda 3. You can see it's under 200 bucks. So uh, my plan is to first plug it in to the vehicle without undoing any of the hydraulic lines and use the scanner to make sure all of the valves click because I want to make sure that this used module will perform well before actually opening up the hydraulic system doing all that work only to find out that it may not work. So let's uh, let's take a look at the service info uh, to see if it needs to be programmed or initialized or what the procedure is. Okay, so ABS hydraulic unit and control module removal installation. Uh, first thing it says when replacing the ABS unit, the configuration procedure must be done before removing the ABS unit. If the configuration is not completed before removing the unit, ABS will not work properly after installation of the ABS, you know, of the replacement unit. So, it says configure the ABS, and click on the link, and it tells you, basically, with your scanner, IDS, or, you know, we'll use the Think Tool Pro S, um, go to module programming, and select this programmable module installation in the ABS menu. Uh, it'll take the data from the original module, then you plug in the new one, and it'll write it into the new one. What we could do, just I'm just curious, we'll just plug in the new one without doing any of this stuff with the scanner, see what, if it sets a code, see if uh, you know we can still bidirectionally control it, and then for the final install we'll do the uh, the PMI, the programmable module installation. So. Let's uh, let's get to it. So let's clean up this mess. The battery's been here for a while. We've got all kinds of crusties on it. So battery's out. I tilted this box to the side, and the PCM is still attached to it with like six screws. So I don't feel like. Tearing that off, so we can work. We should have enough room to do what we need to do. So here's the new module. I am just going to unplug the connector from the original module gently. There you go, and plug it into the new one. Beautiful. Okay, now we're just going to lay this thing down here, put the battery back in, turn the car on, plug the scanner in, and A, see if any codes are set with the new module. There should be some mismatch code, but well, we'll try the bi-directional controls right away. Alright, well, ABS is not fussing about anything at all, and it does talk. So let's just jump into it. 
Let's see, version information, standard equipment module, GA, okay. Read fault code. No DTCs. Let's just do actuation test and go through all of these eight valves. So left front inlet valve on. Yep. Cool. Left front outlet. Heard it click. Left rear inlet. Okay. Left rear outlet. Okay. Right front inlet. Perfect. Right front outlet. Perfect. Right rear inlet. Okay, and right rear outlet. Okay, so those all work. Now the only one I was concerned about was, let's just do it one more time. Okay, left front inlet works. Left front outlet. The left front outlet does not click at the moment. That's not a good thing. It clicked once, but now is it stuck open? Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Supposed to be spring loaded. Left front outlet. So I'm going to note that. Now it's suck if that one got stuck. So this is a little disappointing. So the old module, we had two bad valves that did not click. Left rear outlet and right front outlet okay with the new module we have one valve that doesn't click that's the left front outlet and on the old module it clicks <laughs> so what do we do what's the problem here are these valves mechanically getting stuck in the hydraulic actuator or are the magnetic coils on the module itself getting open I mean you, you think that would set a code so oh man junkyard parts so who who's gonna pay for this additional labor to find out what internally is wrong with the new junkyard module or Amazon eBay module um, can we make a good module out of two bad ones should we tell the owner you gotta pony up 1200 bucks I mean He's a grad student, he's on a budget, and he was pretty happy that I found this uh, used module for $200. Ah, this is tough. I Personally, I'm curious of what is causing these valves to not click. 
obviously you know the scanner works the bidirectional controls work fine because it's a different valve now that's misbehaving on the new module on the old one we have two bad ones on this one we have one bad one and the first time I tried it it slightly clicked and now it doesn't click anymore so does the module need to be um, maybe it's stuck a little bit once you get fluid in there will it work or is the magnetic coil on the module itself not the hydraulic part but the electrical part is that messed up we might have to separate the module from the, um, the hydraulic unit and see if we can test it somehow alright on the bench let's undo these torque screws So the screws are loose. Let's see if we can separate this stupid thing off. So we have eight coils, eight rods, plus the pump connector right there. So if we plug this thing in, would we be able to test with like a metal you know, screwdriver or something if these are activated, you know, one by one? Maybe be a cool test. Uh, so I have the module connected to the car. However, if you try a bi-directional control, it will say Conditions have not been met to start the test. The engine is not running, start the engine, let it idle. Otherwise, turn off the engine, set the key to the on position. So, it's not happy that we have the, obviously, the pump motor circuit fault code stored right now since the pump is disconnected. So, I'm thinking is maybe jump a test light across here so we can still access these magnetic coils. Okay, luckily the test light satisfied the circuit check criteria, and now with no more code stored, we can try the front, left front inlet valve. Okay, this is pretty cool. So <laughs> I found a bolt that's not too long, you don't want it to touch the circuit board in there. And if you just hold it halfway in and then hit on on the scanner. It's the third, the bolt gets sucked in when that coil is activated. So we can actually check electrically if these eight coils work. So let me draw a little picture. So this one right here is going to be the left front inlet valve. Okay, so I'm checking the last one here, the right rear out. So top row is all inlets and the bottom row is all the outlet valves. So right rear out, I'm going to energize it, and I'm going to focus the camera in on the bolt. It's going to be a little tough to see. So I'm going to hold it right here, I'm going to click on. Oh, I'm sorry, right rear outlet make sure you select the right one and right when I hit on that bolt's going to be sucked in try again you'll feel the force on your fingers so electrically everything is perfect here. The problem is with these hydraulic units. So, when you energize that coil, something inside of here goes in and out. And apparently, these valves get stuck. 
They're supposed to be spring-loaded, so when the coil's released, the valve is, you know, facing that way, and when the coil is energized, it pulls it this way, but if it doesn't return, then you're screwed. That's, that kind of blows my mind. So in this module, which valve was bad? Left front outlet was bad, did not click. So that would be this one right here. If we're looking at the module, so bottom row, second one in, bottom row, second one in. Basically, if you're looking at the module like this, bottom row, second one in, it's going to be this guy right here. And using OEM data, we can figure out which ports that goes to and see if we can, I don't know, blow it out, get it to move back and forth. This is ridiculous. I don't want to get another used module. Alright, so I gently knocked that valve with a hammer, reconnected it, and now left front outlet valve is clicking fine. Let me just go through all of them. I'm really hoping this stays working. Okay. Just needed a gentle tap with the hammer. Okay. Just these left front valves one more time. And left front outlet. Okay, I like it. So now this module is ready to be installed in the car. I really hope it works long term. All right, so let me do the programmable module installation just in case there are any variables since the OEM instructions tell us to do this. Special function, programmable module installation. Okay, so the original module is plugged in. So the original is still installed in the vehicle, yes. Sure the module is currently installed in the car is the one old one needs to be replaced. Now we could just replace the hydraulic unit since the module is very easy to swap over. But let's just keep this as a unit. So let's just say yes. Ignition switch is on. Turn the ignition switch off. Okay, install a new module in the ECU. So all I'm gonna do is unplug this one. And plug in this one. Okay, it's clicked in. Okay, turn the ignition switch on. Okay, procedure successful. Okay, turn the ignition switch off.
should be good to go. Now we just need to do the hard part, which is the hydraulic. Switch over the lines, bleed the whole brake system. All right, so let's undo these brake lines. Some of them can be pretty sticky. Um, if you can get a crow's foot socket in here, that's the best option. You see that does that no problem at all. And by the way, the brake pedal is depressed with a snow brush and that will keep all the fluid from the master cylinder from leaking out. You can also use that trick when doing work on, uh, on anything, on brake lines, to keep the master cylinder full. So if you get air in here, then it could be a, a pain to bleed out. So I got one, two, three lines cracked loose. Um, this one you can just remove and then move on to the next one. I have a paper towel under the module here to catch any spilled fluid. Get out of the way. Let's try the next one. It's kind of in a tight spot, so. Crow's foot works very, very well. And you can always lift it up and then pivot it, relocate, and then keep going. Okay, that one should be loose. Loose enough to do by hand now. These ones are already cracked loose. So I'll undo all the brake lines and then we'll pop the new module in there. All the brake lines are free. Got this bolt undone. Now this thing should just slide on out of here. Sweet. So there it is, so we need to transfer this bracket. That should be easy. And put the new module in place. All right, let's take out these plugs. Tighten these in the reverse order of removal. And then you just have to bleed the brakes. All right, excellent. So all six brake lines are torqued to the ABS module. It's plugged in. Now let's fill up this master cylinder. And it's hard to see through because the plastic is all aged, but we'll fill it to the brim start this bleeding procedure where is the fluid level I 
guess it's up here. <laughs> it's really hard to see. Okay, it's right here. Not even halfway to the max, so let's add some more fluid. <clears throat> All right, so let's start bleeding with the left rear. Bleeder nipple is slightly loosened. Take our snow brush out of the way and just pump the brake pedal so we don't see any air bubbles. One man bleeding procedure, you don't need two people. You see the fluid starting to make its way. There's some bubbles there. I think that one's good. So now the diagonal cylinder right front. I'll set up the camera and see if there's any air bubbles there. Just nice smooth pumps. All the way to the floor. And this line is shorter, so it shouldn't take too many pumps to bleed through. See our line has no bubbles in it whatsoever. So you can take this one off. Make sure it's dripping gravity bleed. Tighten that up, oops. Okay, on to the next one. Let's do the left rear, or the right rear. All right, here's the right rear. Dripping nicely. All right, let's do the left front. Oops, almost forgot. Don't forget to uh, add brake fluid. You don't want to start this procedure over again. Last but not least, left front. No air bubbles.
Perfect. Now we can try out the pedal feel. All right, moment of truth here. Hmm. It's definitely better. It doesn't sink halfway. I don't know if I'm happy with that pleased with that. So now let's uh, put the snow brush on the pedal, put all the wheels back on, make sure they're all, you know, being braked equally. Take this thing for a spin, should be all done. All right, final check. Wheels are back on. Snow brush is depressing the brake pedal hard. That's locked. That's pretty tight. That's fairly tight, and that's locked. Okay, so they're all even. Um, let me just try starting the car and uh, depressing the brake pedal. Let's see. Press it with the brush and hold it in place. Yeah, super tight. Brake booster makes a difference. Excellent. So that's it, fixed. ABS module stuck valve. Pretty cool case study. Using a bi-directional scanner, you can control those valves and based on what the pedal does, you can basically do the diagnosis right from the driver's seat. Pretty neat. Not a master cylinder problem, even though it might feel like it. It sinks halfway down. Don't be in a rush to replace your master cylinder. That is a very common uh, parts cannon misfire, if you will, on cars with ABS problems. If you didn't have ABS, then you're probably a master cylinder. So. Uh, this thing you can't really tear apart. It is all sealed together. I mean, you can take the control module off, but not much else you can do. So, whatever's in there is broke. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.